Okay, so for the final tier list for uh, today is uh, Mario Kart um, series. So uh, look at all these games, and yes, I have played all of them. For once, I have pl uh, <clears throat> I have played all of them for once. So let's start with Super Mario Kart. It's there's a uh, there's a B. I mean, I have to be very nice because this is the first. The, what this was the first Mario Party Mario Kart Mario Kart game to be released. Super Nintendo. It was, it it felt very interesting. Super Mario Kart. I mean, it was all flat terrain, which made sense. It felt it's basically just F Zero, but with Mario Kart and Go Kart instead of like. Whatever vehicles, um, vehicles at all. No. But they're like, whatever vehicles they have. Um, Super Mario Kart, it, it, it's a pretty decent, it was a really decent idea. But, I mean, I played the game a lot, and, and, from what I've heard, Japanese players really, really like fast, fast drifting uh, momentum in Super Mario Kart uh, compared to the Americans. And I, do kind of see it. I don't really enjoy it that much because the drifting for me, I've never mastered drifting that much, so I always end up sliding off. And the item boxes don't really make sense at all. Um, thank God they fixed it in Mario Kart 64, but it is the first game, so who am I to blame? But uh, Super Mario Kart, it's average. Mario Kart 64 it goes to S. It's one of the very few, it's, one, it's probably the Mario Kart game I would always come back playing. Mario Kart, D, Mario Kart 64 really revolutionized how much, um, how insane Mario Kart really is today. I, and it's so, it's so uh, memorable that they keep bringing back the, the pipe frame, or yeah, or the carts in Mario, Super Mario Kart and Mario Kart 64. That's something that... I really was surprised that they brought back. I never thought they would actually do that. It's amazing. Mario Kart 64. I, all the maps, all the tracks there are pretty good, except for Banshee Boardwalk, which is everyone's least favorite. I really like the tracks. Um, but I think like Mario Kart 7, Mario, Mario Kart 7, Mario Kart 8, and Mario Kart Wii both have all have really great tracks that I really that I hope would be a really good tracks that I would enjoy if they were DLC more, but if they had more, if Mario Kart 8 Deluxe had DLC. But, uh, yeah. Pretty good. I like the concept of it. Mario Kart 64, uh, it's so, I mean, I like this game, but there's really nothing to say about it. All I say is that it's pretty good. It's always the Mario Kart, I, it's the Mario Kart game I would always come back for because it's really, really fun to play, especially with friends. I've never played Mario Kart 64 with friends for a long time, actually. Moving on, Double Dash, I have bare, I really only played once. I've never played Double Dash uh, because again, I didn't own a GameCube. And I, I, I only played it once with the former friend. I remember it was very, very different. Period. I'll put it as, um, B. I mean, I like the concept of two players, two, like, characters in a cart. That is something I've never thought would happen at all, but... And, like, the double, uh, double items. They brought that back for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which is interesting. And they have some great items. Double Dash, um, is also probably one of the few games Nintendo does not want to acknowledge that much because it was way too different but I think I think they could tackle it again at some point because of how um, crazy and hectic the game would be I bet a lot of people would definitely want to see a double dash or any of the GameCube games on the switch soon but yeah but double dash to me it it's pretty hectic um, I, I mean I guess everyone likes that but for me it's just kind of too much at once but if I do get the chance, I'll probably play it again, and probably uh, rethink that idea. Next is Super Circuit, um, also be, um, it's basically just Mario Kart 64 on the Game Boy Advance. 
nothing else. I don't really have any... I don't have that many thought about Super Circuit. Although it did have some... Uh, interesting enough, it does have... It did have a bunch of courses that would make it to Mario Kart 8, Mario Kart Deluxe, which is really interesting, in my opinion. I mean, all everything... Every... The whole entire ground... The whole entire tracks are flat, kind of like... Super Mario Kart, there's really nothing else to say here other than say it's average. Mario Kart DS! This is an A. I recently started playing this game, and this is- it was really, really fun. Mario Kart DS is probably one of the very popular Mario Kart games. I mean, compared to Mario Kart 8, Mar Mario Kart Wii, it's also pretty popular around the time. I remember a lot of people playing so much on Mario Kart DS. Everyone I knew who had a DS had at least had Mario Kart had a had a copy of Mario Kart DS. Digitally or physically. Mostly physically. Um Mario Kart DS introduced some uh I mean although it's like really crummy because of the uh, uh, because of the graphics of it. Uh, there's a lot of features of Mario Kart DS they should bring back for the new Mario Kart, Mario Kart 9. Big, uh, potentially, like the custom emblems, I really wish they can add those back. That is something that they should, that Nintendo should try again, because that I get a lot of people will get way too creative with it. But I think they should, they should bring it back, all for like nostalgia purposes and something that some some good reward or have like unlockable rewards for those emblems. Mario Kart DS also had some. Before, like, Mario Kart 8, Mario Kart DS had some very, very, very strange characters. Well, a uh, character. I mean, not including the arcade games, because they they were, those were developed by a different company, different uh, developer altogether. But, uh, Mario Kart DS had Rob, um, obscure character before Smash Brothers. There's also a bunch of vehicle ideas that they should bring back from Mario Kart. We, uh, Mario Kart... A, but I also could bring it back in Mario Kart 9 or Tour. I think like the escalator and the uh, that little that escalator and the uh, Rambi car and, the, and that saf and that safari vehicle and the and the freaking tank they have. I I think because of like I highly doubt they'll bring back that tank uh, ve vehicle and Mar from Mario Kart DS. But get Mario Kart DS, it still holds up. Not as much as Mario Kart 64. I would still play that. Mario Kart DS is another add-on, another um, entry in the game that I would that I, sorry, that like pretty much I enjoy. Mario Kart Wii A as well. It's another. Um, both Mario Kart DS and Mario Kart Wii are really child are part of my childhood. Even though I did say Mario Kart DS, I played it recently. I did play a little bit of it, but I haven't played too much of Mario Kart DS. Mario Kart Wii was the first Mario Kart Mar Mario Kart game I've played. It was really revolutional of the steering wheel using the to using the motion controls for like the steering wheel. Mario Kart Wii is is a really it was really memorable for me to uh, play uh, with like, family cousins and maybe today even friends got me into video games altogether, which is nice. Mario Kart Wii added some interesting more vehicles and more characters, including Funky Kong and Dry Bowser. Yeah, and Funky Kong is another character that Nintendo doesn't want to bring back for some reason, for like the newer games. Maybe, I think he's on tour, maybe. I think he's on tour, or I might be wrong. Uh, Mario Kart DS, I haven't played too much of this, but I have played it a couple times. It's a B. Mario Kart 7 is um, really just Mario Kart DS with enhanced t uh, enhanced graphics, and they slowed the game a little bit. Like they had, like for example, they did have I think it was like DK Passway or something. I forgot what the stage was called, but it was a Donkey Kong the Donkey Kong racetrack. They brought that back from DS, and from what I've heard, it wasn't it didn't feel the same compared to like DS. Slow the game down. They have a bunch of power up. They, ha they have new items though. They were very mediocre. Mario Kart Wii also had mediocre items like the Thundercloud from Mario Kart Wii. Uh, Mario Kart 7, they had the Super Leaf. Although it was a good concept. I 
don't think anyone really uh, cared that much, and it only is useful for for some instances. Most of the time, if you get it, that's about it. It's like, oh, all right, my cart. So I've been also introduced a uh, uh, paragliding, um, flying in uh, water, flying in water sections, which is something that I always like. Uh, Mario Kart, we also added some, uh, also added some features like those blue ramps for like, uh, for like bicycles, motorcycles. Those, those are really, really cool. And uh, I think the reason why they brought them, they didn't bring it back, was probably because it slowed the game down a little bit. Like especially War Wario's Gold Mine, it's near like the um, start line, so it didn't really make sense of why it was there. Mario Kart Seven is uh, pretty average. Again, doesn't really have anything special. Mario Kart 8, uh... Be honest, it goes around C. Mario Kart 8, it, it's... It holds up as probably one of the, um, fastest selling, um, Mario Kart games for the Wii U. It sold more copies than Smash Brothers for the Wii U. It, because it was pre-bundled, pre which made sense. Mario Kart Wii added uh, anti-gravity, like basically making the cart or basically making the vehicle a, ho a, a hovercraft. Mario Kart 8, Mario Kart 7 also included uh, ATVs, which is which I didn't really mind. I thought it was just another vehicle. It didn't really add anything new. Uh, Mario Kart 8, it was pretty. I don't really have anything to say about it either. It's it's basically just Mario Kart. Anti grab The tracks are pretty amazing. Some items are alright. Mario Kart 7 had the lucky 7. Mario Kart 8 had the crazy 8. Which, balancing out the game, it's pretty, pretty uh, useful. It's pretty useful. Um, but, uh, for like competitive play, it probably doesn't do well. And it added the super horn, which makes it possible to dodge the blue shell. Even though there are like other methods to avoid the blue shell, which uh, is uh, pretty interesting. The only drawback of Mario Kart 8 is that it had a bunch of downsides when it came out. Like the map, I remember I always complained that the map of the track didn't appear on the TV screen, but rather on the gamepad. Although the gamepad was pretty good, it didn't really do anything uh, special, uh, in my own opinion. It did have the horn button, which I think is very, very cool. I don't think anyone really remembers using the horn button that much for Mario Kart 8 move on, and everything what makes Mario Kart special is also the battle battle modes. The battle modes are always the best part of Mario Kart as well. Uh, Mario Kart is the very is the only Mario Party. Why do I keep mentioning Mario Party? Mario Kart game that has a, that has probably the worst battle system yet because it's just all tracks. It's all tracks. They uh. Yeah, all the, all the course, all like the battle courses are just tracks from the game. And that's about it. There's really it's not open space at all. You're just going around the tracks, and that's about it. Which is pretty pretty lame. Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is also average. It's I didn't understand why they made Mario Kart 8 and ported and rebooted uh, for uh, for the Wii U to the Switch. Uh, that's just a thing that kind of bugs me out a lot. Like, they could have made a new game, but I guess they just um, ported it out because they needed a Mario game immediately. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, um, they did add some, um, it didn't really add anything. Uh, they brought everything for Mario Kart 8. Funny enough, Mario Kart 8 had, it was the first game that also had DLC. They did a crossover, it was not the first time they did like, uh, had different characters. Like I said, the arcade Mario Kart the Mario Kart Arcade cabinets and the uh, Mar and Mario Kart DS had different characters, but the arcade systems were uh, developed by a different company, Namco to be uh, specific, because it had all a bunch of Namco characters, like Pac-Man for example. Mario Kart DS had Rob, I don't even know why, but they just threw it in. They could have bring him back, but uh, I'm not sure. Mario Kart 8 had some characters, including duplicates, like... Tanuki Mario, Cat Peach, but they did bring some characters like Dry Bowser, which is pretty good. And yeah, there was also some other characters like Animal Crossing characters and Link. Like I didn't understand, but okay. Um, and they added some DLC tracks. None of them were didn't really um, hold up in my own opinion. 
All right, so back to this. Uh, sorry for the uh, interruption uh, for a bit, but uh, yeah, Mario Kart 8, um, Mario Kart 8, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Most of the um, tracks listed aren't really put to my expectations. Kind of like uh, like the Animal Crossing one. I mean, I like the I like the idea of the seasonal seasons being changed, but um, that's really it. Um, none of them really like piqued my uh, expectations. Really, all of them were just okay. Not as great as like Mario Kart 64 or Double Dash, but hey, at least they tried. In the final game, Mario Kart Tour. Mario Kart Tour. Oh boy. What is wrong with this game? This game is really, really like bottom tier when it comes to Mario, the Mario Kart series. It's really, really low tier compared to all the other games. I like the diversity of more characters, ca uh, parts, cart parts, and even tracks. There are so many that I really, really enjoyed. However, the problem with the game is just how microtransactions and how the game takes way too long when you try to play it. And for someone who likes to complete some games 100%, uh, that is a one thing that does really irk me a lot. How Mario Kart Tour uh, doesn't really, um, it doesn't feel competitive enough. It just feels like those normal mobile games you would find, kind of like uh, Super Mario Run. It's I mean, I'll defend Super Mario Run is not terrible. I'll defend that no matter what. But as compared to other mobile games, it's probably the only best one. Best mobile game compared to everything else. But there are some good mobile games. Mario Kart Tour is not a good Nintendo mobile game. And it's not a good mobile game in general. Uh, excluding all the cheap um, mobile games you'll find online now. <clears throat> Mario Kart Tour doesn't um, feel... Yeah, it doesn't. It felt like it doesn't fit with any of the games. It felt like uh, a really heavy fan, Nintendo fan, really created this game uh, out of scratch and try to uh, fit it in. But no, it's official. It looks official, but it is official because this because Mario Kart Tour feels like a huge fan project. But no, it's it's official. There's a whole lot of things wrong. And just like some of the Mario Mario Sports games, Mario isn't even playable at the start. You have to unlock him. I got very lucky by unlocking him, because there are some people who can't really unlock some of the other characters. Unless you uh, desperately buy so many rubies, like uh, like when Plain Rocks did it by spending $200 on it, which, yeah, even um, he regrets. I can definitely uh, not really relate, but I can definitely tell that, like, the, the, that is how, um, that's how, like, most gaming companies sucker in most, most uh, players when it comes to mobile games. They sucker you in with in-app purchases and microtransactions to the point where basically it dries your whole credit card or debit card dry. And it just kind of irks me a lot. As, this is the same thing with FNAF AR. They really try, but there's a whole lot of things that doesn't fit well with it. And that's literally my general thoughts of Mario Tour. So, um, that is it. Anyways, if you liked the video, make sure you like it, uh, comment down below, if you want more content like this, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, bell share this with someone you know. Uh, if you want me to do more tier lists, uh, I plan to do a lot of these and discuss about my opinions. And remember, you don't have a cow, going now. Mm -hmm.